I can. Can you hear me? So tell me why you're interested in the jobs in the ICU here. So I, um, when I, I'm from Arizona State, I graduated from Arizona State University and I did some uh, clinicals at big hospitals and I also volunteered at going through um, nursing school. Um, but I, so I love hospital, but the reason why I love ICU is I really love the ICU atmosphere. I love the critical thinking. I like the, um, you know, sort of fast, fast pace at times where, you know, you're really having to use your nursing judgment. And I think that a lot of ICU nurses have a similar personality, which I feel like I kind of blend in, you know, kind of that very detail oriented, you know, right. in depth thinking, which uh, really appeals to my interests. So uh, that's why I, ICU appeals to me. And then just hospitals in general appeal to me because I've had experiences, you know, volunteering there and my clinicals there, and it's always been great. Have you been working as a nurse up in Washington? Yes. Yep. Okay. So why don't you tell me about that? What are you doing up there? So I am, um, working at a hospital, it's called and I am, my main position is actually on a medical surgical floor, but it's a very rural hospital and so I have been cross trained into our ICU and ER. So actually most of the time I show up to my med surge position and they say, oh, we're short a nurse in the ER or, you know, we have a high patient load in the ICU today or difficult patients and so we need you there or you're yeah. down a nurse in the ICU and we can put you there. And so most of the time I actually end up not being on med surge. So I'm cross trained to all of the spots. It's a very rural hospital. It has an ER. Um, it has a small OR. The ICU is a total of six beds and they have two nurses there. Um, and our med surge is about 25 beds or so. Very tiny, but it's been great because I get to be resourceful and I feel like I'm a good contribution to the hospital because they can, I never get called off because they can <laughs> always put me somewhere, which is good. That's good, that's good. And rural hospitals are great because you have to learn everything. Yes. <laughs> you come and jack the ball trade there. Yes, it was a huge shocker coming from, you know, ASU had such a great, well-rounded nursing program with all the clinical sites, these huge hospitals, and I come here, this is the only hospital, I'm on actually an island, it's the only hospital on the island, oh, wow. and um, we still do paper orders, we're slowly, we're transitioning into not doing paper orders, and I was like, what is this? <laughs> You know, I had to learn so many things that I didn't realize I was going to actually have to know being in a rural hospital, but it's been good and it's been nice to have the different aspect and approach to things compared to Absolutely. where I did my clinicals from. So how long have you been working at the hospital there? I have been there since beginning of September. I got my license in August, so closely creeping oh, up on a year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell me, what kind of orientation did you get when you started nursing there? Uh, when I started nursing, I, um, being a small hospital, they don't have a set orientation program right. or preceptorship program, so um, I had like a three-day little clinical orientation as far as learning certain kind of equipment and the pumps and things like that and going kind of through policies, and then I was paired with another nurse for a, about three weeks, um, so it was not a very extensive amount of time. Uh, my orientation to the ICU and ER have been longer. Uh, I was paired with a nurse in the ER for about two, three months, and same for the ICU. Okay. Um, okay. And but I'm also picking up shifts over there, so I'm not there consistently. You know, three, four times a week. Um, so that's why you know it's been a little longer of a stretch. But right, right. Okay, cool. All right, very nice. Um, what would you say is your five-year goal? My five-year goal, um, right now, um, I would love to, uh, I'm starting to think about what I want to do to expand my education. I'm really still, you know, getting my feet wet and, you know, learning what nursing is all about and the different fields and everything. But um, I would, ideally, I see myself in five years have beginning or, you know, am halfway in or whatever to getting my master's or um, I've also thought about nurse practitioner, but again, I'm just right now trying to kind of figure out what I want to do before I actually go in and specialize in something. Sure. What strengths do you bring to this role? I think my strengths are, um, one, I'm very outgoing. I get along great with others. Um, I feel like I have a lot of knowledge to offer and, you know, if I in critical thinking and if I don't know something, I am going to figure it out 
and or ask people to figure out the answer. I'm not afraid to ask questions. I'm not shy of you know being open about what I don't know. And um, I feel like I'm a great communicator, whether it's communicating with my fellow nursing staff or the charge nurse or the managers or supervisors or the physicians. Um, I'm not as scared to approach and ask those questions, um, especially when it involves patient care because <laughs> I never want to compromise that. Uh, and so, yeah, those are some of my yeah. strengths. How have you been keeping your knowledge current? So, uh, well, one thing I do every day, I, have, I don't think there's a single shift I have gone by that I have not looked something up, um, but I've been, um, they have little classes that are offered at my hospital that I do. Like I did one recently, it was like a geriatric education course. Um, I, I've got my BLS and ACLS. I just finished a telemetry course in April that was like a nine week extensive, like in-depth course of telemetry. And um, pretty much I feel like at all times I've been doing some sort of course. When I started in ICU, I had to complete an ICU consortium class that was like 64 CEUs and it was online and so I did that to um, it's basically kind of like well it's very in-depth but <laughs> an intro to ICU even though it was very detailed oriented but it was a good exposure to the information before I was actually you know seeing it in, in person. How do you show people you're listening to them? Uh, eye contact. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, and um, also, so eye contact, looking at them, and then kind of regurgitating what they're saying and making sure that I'm understanding them correctly and um, just being engaged. And um, I think, I mean, we know listening is a huge part of being a nurse, and that's pretty much, you know, a big part of our job. But, um, yeah, regurgitating what they say to make sure that I'm, I'm hearing them correctly and even if I have no idea what to say, if it's like a you know, sad situation or a terrible situation, um, I feel like if you just regurgitate or like, I see, I see that you're feeling distraught or I see that you're feeling frustrated, um, that tends to work well for listening yeah. and the patients or family members or whoever it is as well. In your um, hospital, are there any process improvement projects going on for anything in particular? So on the falls committee, what sort of things are they trying to implement to help reduce falls? Tell me about a time you had to go above and beyond the call of duty to get something done. What was that? What kinds of challenges do you face on your current job? Um, current job, the challenges would be um, equipment that is older and not quite working as well um, uh -huh. can be kind of frustrating. Um, and recently, we, I actually had a, a patient who was, went downhill very quickly on med surge, and um, the blood pressure machine stopped working, and uh, the bed stopped working, and we have double rooms, and so we had to oh. literally like pick up the bed. We had a bunch of us to try and turn it, and um, so I think one of the most challenging things is sometimes feeling like you don't have the resources there that you need to provide the best patient care and obviously that's something that they're forever working on especially with not having as many resources but it's a frustrating from a nursing standpoint when you think back and say you know I wish this would have worked or I could have done this differently um, or if I had this this would have gone better but I mean that's one of the great parts about nursing is you always forever are learning from those mistakes or things that didn't go well and you can better improve for the next situation. Uh, most part, great customer service, well, would be the making the patient or person, whoever you're feeling, feeling like you are, like, almost like they're the only one there that you are going above and beyond for them. And, you know, even if you walk into one room and you have a patient who is totally not doing well or angry at you or angry at the doctor, is being able to walk into the next room and making that patient feel like, you didn't just get yelled at, you are there to be available to them and that you are there to meet their needs um, no matter how what lengths that you have to go to, to to serve them and make them feel like their stay is you know going to the best that they can because no one comes to the hospital for fun, <laughs> ideally. <laughs> Um, except in the ER. I feel like some people come to the ER <laughs> for fun. <laughs> oh boy, 
anymore. Yeah, it's like their uh -huh. hobby. But, you know, no one's in the hospital for, you know, they're in their most vulnerable states. And I think and that's one of the things I love about being a nurse is you're working with them in their most vulnerable states. So making sure that they feel like you are there for them, whether it's listening or making them just feel better. But. Right. Tell me about, um, well, I know you told me about the one guy. Can you tell me about another uh, difficult patient or family member that you had to take care of? and how you turned around the situation? Yeah, so I had um, a family one time that was, uh, they didn't like the hospitalist that was assigned to their father's case. They had uh -huh. had this hospitalist before several times and they did not really, they weren't very fond of her. And, you know, as a nurse, you, I was, you know, <laughs> It's hard because even though I really like this hospitalist, you can't be like, oh no, they're wonderful, it's fine. Because I was validating, I had to validate, you know, their concerns of, you know, I under I'm sorry you had this bad experience. And whenever I have a family member who's upset, whether it's at a previous, maybe a previous nurse or a previous physician, I always like to say, what can I do for you right now that can would help this situation? What do you think, what can I do within my power where we could solve this. Um, fam this family member in particular, they're very upset and I said, you know what, I will, I'll see what I can do. I will talk with the hospitals and, and let them know your concerns and uh, see what we can arrange. And they actually ended up switching the hos a, to a different hospital. There's always two on. And so they were very thankful by the time they went home. They felt like their dad was in better care, even though this other hospital does a phenomenal job. They must have just yeah, not yeah. lined up at some point. And um, they are very thankful for that and it, you know, kind of put out a little fire that could have been bad at the start sure. of my shift. <laughs> Tell me about a time when somebody challenged your trustworthiness. How did you handle that? Uh, I did have, so, I mean, this kind of goes along with it. I'm trying to think of a good uh, situation, but I did yeah. have a nurse who, um, it was a, I, so I work kind of a mid-shift right now. I work from 3 p.m. to 11.30 p.m. And so this night shift nurse was coming on at 11, 11.30, and we were given a report. And she uh, notoriously <laughs> liked to uh, call me out on things in the patient's room that maybe I hadn't done, that I should have done. And I was just, you know, I was learning at the time. I was very new, and so I didn't wasn't aware of certain protocols yet with how things right. were done. And um, so this uh, nurse... Uh, had called me one time this patient was in for a fall and uh, they were I think they no I don't think they fractured their hip I think they were in for a sink a sinkable fall and so we were monitoring them and uh, this patient was totally alert and oriented would call appropriately every time they needed to get to the bathroom and so the bed alarm was not on the patient because they were calling appropriately um, but for our hospital policy if a patient is in for a fall they are to have the bed alarm on and so this nurse made me aware of that and in the patient's room uh, yeah. during report, which uh, wasn't very professional on her end. Um, but I ended up afterwards, after the situation had passed, I ended up, you know, later on at the end of report, not in the patient's room, just saying, hey, if there's ever an issue with, you know, maybe I haven't done something correct, you know, I, I apologize, I, I am still learning, but if, you know, you can let me know outside of the room, that way we can talk about it and, you know, figure it out in a professional, respectful way. That way the, the patient doesn't feel involved. And um, at first she was a little taken back, but, you know, now we're good, we're great. <laughs> Nothing, no issues have arised. And, you know, sometimes it just, we all need little reminders sometimes. And we, you know. Sure, so. sure. Uh, very uh, outgoing, uh, energetic, a, a quick learner. Um, I've had a lot of <laughs> nurses on my shift say, wow, you know, you've only been a nurse for this long and you've already, you know, surpassed this nurse who's been a nurse for 10 years. Or, you know, they, uh -huh. not that it's good to compare, but they always are saying how, they're like, wow, you do so much. You know, you're in the ER and the ICU and you're so new. Like, how do you do it all? And uh, I think they describe me as a, a quick learner, someone uh -huh. who's very focused and motivated, and uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. What's important to you in your work environment? Uh, important in my work environment is that I like who I work with and I like what I'm doing. Um, uh -huh. I think that even if you have a terrible shift, if you have a great 
support system and team to get you through that that makes a you know world of a difference and you can still come home and feel supported um, I also think having a great upper management with who you can talk to if you feel like a situation isn't correct where you feel like if you talk to them they're not going to go and um, disclose your name to other uh, supervisors or things like that you know when they're talking with them uh, is important and I'm fortunate I do feel like I have a good management where I'm at right now and I you know have yeah. utilized that where I've talked to my manager quite a bit and uh, also she's been very open to me cross training which is difficult for uh, right. some managers to have an employee that they are now donating to other <laughs> departments yeah. but yeah having yeah. a great I, when you have a supportive upper management is I think huge yeah. good, good. what are your expectations of us? expectations um, is that I have a great team with who I can go to for questions. Um, I also would love um, continuing education opportunities and you know things that classes or you know finding able to find resources for ways to expand my education. And um, I just mainly going back to feeling supported um, in all aspects of you know I'm. We're all still learning. Doesn't matter if you've been a nurse for 25 years, you know, every day, still learning. Right. So, uh, yeah, feeling supported and like I have a good, a good team. Sure, very good. Okay. Well, I've done my question. So let me tell you about the ICUs, okay? Okay. So, all right. Very nice to meet you. Yeah, you so, too. So um, you will hear from us within the week. Okay. Um, and then uh, we will go from there. And um, it's delightful to meet you. Yeah, you too. I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. Absolutely, my pleasure. <laughs> All right, you take care. Bye -bye. You too. Bye.